You either allow me to work with you and I work with my other guides at the same time or we don't work together at all. That don't work with me. And a lot of people are afraid of her. <laughs> I'm not. And I told her that straight up. And I know that sounds so stupid. Like some people are going to be like, whatever, Melinda, you can think that all you want. And this is not me bragging. This is not me making it out to be something that I'm not. I'm just saying when I choose to work with a deity, it's because of the vibration of feeling like there's no pressure and there's no judgment. And more importantly, there's no control over how I learn. That is a big, big red flag to me. When you work with a deity who controls what you do, how you do it, tells you what to do, run the other way that is not the right way to learn. Everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melinda. I'm the Mystic Witch, and you're watching Light Warrior News. And today we're gonna talk about Hikate. Now, before I start, welcome. Thank you so much for being a part of this channel and being a returning subscriber or clicking and you're new and you're interested in this topic. Also, keep in mind that I'm pretty sure my channel has been shadow banned. So your support and your love really means a lot to me because a lot of people have an issue with freedom of speech of my personal opinion, especially when it is for some weird reason considered controversial <laughs> to not want to work with evil. Oh, hell no! What we're going to do today is I'm going to discuss Hikate. I don't like the hypocrisy. I don't like the contradictions. And I certainly do not like to be told what to do. That's just my energy, okay? I don't like it when people tell me what makes you a witch and what doesn't. That's not your place to tell me what makes me a witch and what doesn't. I have received a lot of backlash for even coming out as a witch, even about a year, two years ago. I frankly don't care what anyone thinks about me, about my practices, about my spiritual beliefs, about how I do my own thing, because I consider myself more of an, of an individual mind. I do not align myself with any ideology of any type, except with a moral compass and a moral code of do what thy will, but do harm to none. When you do good for others, good will come to you. So I do firmly also believe in the the energy of karma and not just believe but know it to be true because i've learned a lot from my spirit guides i am not making this video to make you believe in what i believe i'm not making this video to change your point of view in working with her i'm not making this video to shame anyone who works with her i think if you are drawn to her you are drawn to her for a reason when you learn things from her i think that's good i also believe that when we learn we learn for good in all areas, whether it's from pain and suffering or from laughter and love. And when we combine those energies, we create something so powerful because we are all of those things. We are not just good, but we have a, a dark side. And I think that when we embrace that side of us, that makes us more bountiful in energy and who we are. But I also firmly believe that we should never get lost in that dark side because that can take the better of us and we can lose our truest compass of what is right from what is wrong. What I'm going to share today is my experience with Hikate. Now, some people say her name is Hecate or Hecate. It doesn't really matter to me how you say her name. So correcting me is not going to matter. I'm not going to read those comments. And this video is not to give you history lesson 101 of this deity. So if you're looking for that, go to another video because that's not what this is going to be about. This is about my experience of why I will never work with her and why I don't think other people should either. But again, that's my opinion. I've been told and informed by some people in the past, I won't say their names, who had worked with her. And I couldn't help but notice that a lot of these people who do work with Hikate are very dark vibrational people. They're very negative. They're very, they're very aggressive. They're not 
positive people. They're very toxic. I just couldn't help but notice that this seems to be a common theme for a lot of people who work with her or who have worked with her. I have had an experience with encountering her and even trying to attempt to work with her, but the truth was I refused to work with her after I tested her and learned quite a few things about her that I feel as a demonologist, other people are being deceived by, by her and by other people who just say, hey, follow her, work with her just because that's what everyone says you should do. I'm a firm believer that just because everyone does it doesn't mean you should, sis, doesn't mean you should. Just because everyone jumps off a cliff doesn't mean you should. Doesn't mean you're going to sprout fucking wings. It doesn't mean you're going to suddenly learn to fly. That's not how life works. And that's not how truth works. And that's not how wisdom works. And for me, when a lot of people kept pushing this and even saying, you should work with Hecate or you should work with Hecate or, you know, a lot of witches and people who identify in witchcraft, pagans, I identify personally as a pagan and I firmly uh, identify in a level as a light warrior, light worker. As a psychic medium, you learn, or at least I have learned, so many things about deities and about understanding the deception from malevolent spirits. A lot of the times, people are so easily duped in these lies. People are so easily deceived by these deities that are worshipped consistently, especially within the pagan or witch community, or even in the psychic community. I have worked heavily and I still work with Horus, with Egyptian goddess Isis, with Shiva, Lord Shiva, with Ganesha, with Archangel Michael, and with many other types of deities, have worked with Parvati, who is also in transformation of Kali. Even when it comes to Kali, her perspective of that, I don't agree with it. But do I adore the side of Parvati? Absolutely. She's lovely in every way. That this is what I've learned so far that I cannot ignore, that I feel people deserve to know the truth. One thing I have learned as a medium is if you just take verbatim what spirits will tell you, you're in trouble. Spirits will tell you what you want to hear. They're not going to tell you the truth all the time. Oh, well, he seems nice or she seems nice. And yeah, they, they're they kind of a part of hell, but they, they don't really align with that. They don't really enslave people. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. And you believed it. There are a lot of people who believe it. And it's really sad because it's such a an easy way to be deceived. <laughs> it's such an easy way to be fooled by a simple, oh, I don't do that. Oh, I'm being misunderstood. But they align with that. Why would they align with hell? Why would they align with evil, demons and devils, for example? If they're so misunderstood, why would they still align with that, though? When I was encountering Hikate, it was with Shiva, with the guidance and assistance of Shiva. It was um, in this different realm experience. And I astral project. I'm an adamant astral projector. I astral project pretty much almost every day. Some days I take breaks. My guides help me to chill out and have breaks because it can make you very sick if you do it too much. When I was with Shiva, I had brought up Hikate and asked about her and especially it's the fact that you know a lot of people talk about you know her within witchcraft and within magic and that she will help you in your witchcraft and you have to be really serious and you have to be really into it but I also couldn't help but notice a lot of people in these YouTube videos and their experiences that they always said the same thing, which I thought was a red flag. And they always kept saying the same thing, which was, you got to be careful about how and what you say to her because she reacts and she can be very easily offended, basically. That's the politest way to say it, or defensive. So if you even disagree with her or have a questionable interaction, she'll get really pissed off, basically. That was definitely a red flag. I don't know about you, but if someone were to introduce me to their boyfriend or girlfriend and they say, oh, just be careful about what you say to them, they kind of go off the rails. Wouldn't you think that that's a toxic relationship? Wouldn't you think, yeah, I don't know if that's okay. I don't know if that's healthy. I think that's a red flag, right? You would think that that would be people's reaction. You would think that people would be like, okay, sure, you could learn a lot about magic. You could learn a lot about 
spirituality, whatever. But if they're getting all <laughs> pissed off at you, angry at you, easily offended, shouldn't that be something you should be worried about? And that's something that I've learned as a demonologist when I have interacted with demons because of hauntings of my clients in the past. I've been taking a break on that because there's been so much healing that's had to be done. When you do that kind of work to help people in the paranormal, it it's very detrimental to your health. It, it can really do a number on you. But what I learned from those experiences, all those clients and those hauntings, is that you can't, you can't listen to what they say to you and to face value and say, okay, that's that's the truth. No, listen to the energy of what they're giving off, what they're giving, and feel that energy. That's the truth. So if a spirit comes up to you and tells you they're safe, but they're making you shake and you're uncomfortable and you're nervous and you feel like you have to walk on glass, rock around eggshells, if you're always worried about what you say, that's not true power from a deity. That's fear. And that's fear that they are putting in your energy on purpose because that's who they are. And that's what they want you to feel is that fear. Don't get me wrong, there are benevolent deities where I could even feel the energy of feeling intimidated, shy, but never do I ever feel fear or threatened in any way by Shiva's presence, Ganesha's presence, Archangel Michael's presence, Isis, Osiris, Horus, Anubis. Never have I felt threatened in any way by their presence. Even when I've cussed them out, would I be upset? People be like, why'd you cuss them out? I'm human. I lash out. It's my fire sign. It's not an excuse. It's an explanation. But I apologize. We heal. We move forward. And I learn. And I love them for that. I love their tenderness and their empathy and understanding and their wisdom and their patience and forgiveness. But when I met Hikate, that was a different story. But when I had first encountered her, after I had talked to Shiva about her, he did warn me. He said she does have hounds with her. I said, I've heard about that. People say they're hellhounds. Is that true? He said, yes and no. I don't listen to myths of what these, you know, historians say about whatever. Some of it's true, but a lot of it's not. But some of it is. It depends. Shiva had explained that these hellhounds were basically, or one in particular, was based on this one person who was tortured and sent to hell, Hecate decided to transform her into a, a dog and bring her back to earth or wherever she was at to get her out of hell. There's other stories, backstories about it, but I really don't give a shit about those backstories. If you try to, you know, correct me, cool, good for you, but um, I really don't care. When you get lost on those stories, you lose the sight of the truth. You lose the sight of the facts based on these deities and their overall agendas and their narratives and their motivations. And what I couldn't help but notice when I was interacting with Hikate was encountering her presence, but also looking at her attire. It was fucking weird. She is cloaked and very gray, dark colors. She almost looked like a person who's constantly in mourning, like in a funeral. There was some part of me where I wanted to see the beauty in her, but it was very difficult to do so. But then there was also moments where she would show me her truest beauty, and she was fantastically beautiful. But there was still this energy that made me feel so small. Now, people will say automatically, especially with people in the <laughs> spiritual community, they'll say something like, oh, that's just you mirroring yourself and that's how you feel towards her. Trust me, I thought about that. That was the first thing that I was trying to address. But then at some point, I started having horrendous visions, horrible visions of things that she had done to people, of things that she had done to spirits, things that she had committed. Now, not everything, but quite a few things that I didn't know what I was seeing, but it was almost like permeating evil energy that I could feel. And it was like memory flashes in my mind that weren't my memories. The only time that happens is when I'm in the presence of a demon or a devil or other some type of low vibrational spirit that feeds off of people and their suffering or off of spirits and their suffering. This was a huge red flag to me. I, I can't 
express how much of a red flag like i felt it in my heart and so i spoke to uh shiva about this and i said i don't know what it is but there's something about her that doesn't make sense to me and then he said you came from christianity in the beginning i said yeah he said there is some truth to it do you remember what it was i was like well i'm not sure what where you're going with this but what he said test her if there's something about her that you feel doesn't sit right with you in how you feel test her don't feel bad about it test her and so I took that advice and when I went to her, I brought up something because I couldn't help but notice about her keys. She was draped in these keys and she loves keys. And I thought, one, that's weird. Why are you collecting a bunch of keys? But then I started asking her questions and she started getting really kind of pissed off about it. I did ask her about her moral compass. And I asked her specifically, do you believe in cursing people? And she said, well, yes, when they deserve it. And I said, who gives you the judgment to decide that? And she said, I'm always the judge of that. She said something along those lines. She said other things better than how I'm saying it here, that's for sure. But, um, and I'm also <laughs> seeing in my head, I'm hearing in my head, um, I'm being heavily protected because uh, she, she's 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 going to be super pissed off about this video. She's very, very mad about it already. When I encountered her, I couldn't help but notice that she seemed to always have some kind of an e egotistical answer, something of that f seemed kind of like entitled. Like she felt like this is this is what I think should happen and that's why I do it. And I believe everyone has their own judgments. And I also believe everyone's entitled to their own experiences and feelings in their own justifications of what they feel. I do not believe in causing harm to another just because you think they deserve it. There's a time and place for those kinds of situations. Like if someone came into your home and broke into your home and they start attacking your family, I do believe you have the right at that point to attack them back to protect your family. I believe that. That's not what a curse is. A curse, to some people, they think is justification. But the truth is, more than half the time, people identify revenge with karma. They're so blended together, people can't identify the difference. They, they get blurred, you know, and people can't see it. They can't identify the difference anymore, especially in magic. I told her, I said, you know, karma does come back, and I do believe in karmic spells to enhance the karma to come. But there's a difference between karma and a curse. A karma spell, for example, is when a person does a spell to make an equal equivalence to occur that would justify the exact repercussions of what that person did to you. In other words, you don't decide what that karma is going to be. You allow the universe to choose that. And it does work. I've done it. And it's very powerful. And some people would say, well, that's not any different from a curse. Yes, it is. Because a curse is where a person is choosing the repercussions of what they think is justifiable. When more than half the time, their personal anger and their ideology becomes clouded with revenge. And more than half the time, that's where karma comes back to bite them in the ass for giving them unjustified curses for something as simple as they just don't like them. I've seen it. I've seen people do horrible curses to people over something so minuscule and so stupid. And it's not right. And I don't think we should abuse our magic, our energy frequency in that way. I think it's irresponsible. I think it's ungodly. And what I mean by godly is you have a choice to be what kind of entity you want to be when you die. You have a choice of who you want to be in existence in totality. And how you behave towards others is the repercussions and also the energy frequency. That print will be there for everyone else to see of who you are. And if you allow that negative energy to consume you and to take over your decisions, you're no better than demons. You're no better than the devils. And you're no better than Satanists who work in black magic and demonolaters who work with demons and devils. And the more disappointing part is when I asked Hikate about those keys, she made it very, very apparent to me. And this is where a lot of people don't know this, but the keys are symbolic. And whether people want to accept this or not, she's gatekeeping the truth and the knowledge of magic. Why do you think a lot of witches 
coaches feel like they can only go to her and they can't work with anyone else besides her. She even informed me of that at one point. She was like, you can't work with anyone else besides me because I want you to hear me. I want you to focus on me. And I was like, God damn, chill. (laughs) That's a little extreme. And she was like that. And that right then and there, I was like, you're already going to lose me because that's not how it works for me. You either allow me to work with you and I work with my other guides at the same time, or we don't work together at all. That don't work with me. And a lot of people are afraid of her. (laughs) I'm not. And I told her that straight up. And I know that sounds so stupid. Like some people are going to be like, whatever, Melinda, you can think that all you want. And this is not me bragging. This is not me making it out to be something that I'm not. I'm just saying when I choose to work with a deity, it's because of the vibration of feeling like there's no pressure and there's no judgment. And more importantly, there's no control over how I learn. That is a big, big red flag to me. That's a really big red flag for me. When you work with a deity who controls what you do, how you do it, tells you what to do, run the other way, that is not the right way to learn. I have learned from so many of these deities and they have given me the freedom to be able to express myself in such a way where it is not like a lesson. It's not like a course. I see people all the time saying, oh, I had to read all these books and I had to do all of this and I had to do all of that. That is not what true magic to me anyway is all about. Now, if it works for you, cool. Don't get me wrong. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of research, but at the same time, it's supposed to be about escaping the realms of limitation and embracing that limitless, bountiful affirmation of goodness and energy and being whatever you want to be in these realms and also escaping those boundaries and breaking them open to flourish in your life here on the physical plane to such a degree that you could never imagine. People think it's impossible. I don't. I'm a testimony here. I'm alive because of it. I'm alive because these deities help me to live my life in a better way and to love myself and to be a better part of who I am and to learn how to do that for other people as well. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time, but that is one of the most important, important lessons And wisdoms I've learned is to allow people to be who they are and to not tell them what they can and cannot do. You give them advice when they need it or ask, but you don't push yourself on people. You let them come to you. And I just rhymes. That's, I know it's divine. If you choose to work with Hikate, cool. Good for you. But that's not for me, babe. That's not for me. I don't feel like Working with a deity just because everyone says you should is the right path. Just because it works for you doesn't mean it works for everyone else. And just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you. But I I make this video for my fans and for my viewers and also for other people who are looking for information and red flags on Hikate. And I say this with full love and also full warning. Be prepared. She's fucking bossy. And I'm not about that. And also keep in mind, just because they're ancient, just because they are wise, does not give them the right to tell you what to do. If you want to learn something from a deity, they will teach you. Benevolent deities, even Shiva, he'll teach you all kinds of stuff about magic. Ganesha is very good at magic. They're excellent at magic, but they don't work in the realms of demons or devils or hell. And they don't gatekeep anything. And they don't certainly tell you what to do and how to learn. They encourage things. They give you what you need when you ask for it in the moment, but they don't force anything on you. And that's what makes them so good. But my last piece of advice is do your own research and listen to your heart. Just because everyone says or a person suggests to work with a certain deity and they say this is what we're supposed to do because this is what society or what you're supposed to do in magic. You know, people even talk about Aleister Crowley. Fuck that guy. (laughs) He's a demonolater. He worked with devils. He summoned them. And a lot of people think that in magic, that working with devils and demons is what 
means embracing your dark side. <laughs> That's not true. It's so not true. Embracing your dark side is about embracing the things you're not so happy or proud about yourself. And then you learn how to love yourself and be compassionate towards those parts. It's not about being a bad person and doing bad things or working with bad spirits. That's not what embracing the dark side is about. It's about embracing the hardships and the suffering and the lessons and even things about you that you may not like when you get angry, when you get sad, when you're depressed, all these feelings or whatever they are or experiences or traumas, those are your dark sides. But that doesn't mean that you should embrace that and also start working with Baphomet. That's not how that shit works. That's what neutrality is about. Embracing your dark side is about embracing those embodiments that you're not happy with, acknowledging them and being kind to them about yourself, to yourself about those pieces and putting them back together. But that doesn't mean that you should start working with an entity who's gonna make you feel uncomfortable because that vibration is what they not only give off, but they're putting inside of you. And the more you're around that energy, the more it becomes a part of you and I'm not about that. So this is the end of my message. I hope this gives you some clarity and more importantly, some feedback on my experience with the Kahate. I will say that when I basically uh, pretty much exposed her for being a gatekeeper and being pretty fucking controlling, um, yeah, she threatened to attack me. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> that same night, she gave me some horrible nightmare about, ironically, I am not kidding, it was some hellhound chasing me in this building and it was trying to eat me alive and it was extremely volatile and aggressive. So she sent her dogs I'm not exaggerating. She sent her dogs on me. That is not benevolent. That is not even being neutral. That's being a petty bitch. <laughs> when you send your dogs on me, we're done. I'm never working with you ever. And I'm exposing your ass for what you are. When you act that way, after you've been a, a god or a goddess or whatever you want to identify as, and you behave that way, you haven't learned a damn thing except how to be petty, how to be a child. And that's sad. The funny part was too, after that, when Shiva found out, let's just say <laughs> he he made sure that that's, that shit's not going to happen again. She caught me off guard. He didn't even know it was going to happen either because when people work with especially deities that are very highly advanced in their magic or in their psychic attacks, it can even catch even gods off guard, even deities like Shiva off guard because they know how to master time and how to catch you when you're most vulnerable, even for him. And it's very, very sneaky. This is how people get attacked all the time, even by demons and devils. And to me, that's some petty shit. I have no fear making this video because I know I'm heavily protected. And I'm I'm just saying as a shout out to Shiva, thank you. He's awesome. I love him. But I wish you guys so much love and light. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way if you did. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know down in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. I know I don't add that in the beginning, but you get my drift. I love you guys and I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye guys.